The town of Berlin. Country charm at the center of Connecticut. Hey, welcome, welcome everybody to our town council meeting. If we could rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Councilor Adela Christensen. Here. Councilor Giannone. Here. Mayor Kaczynski. Here. Councilor Luddy. Here. Councilor Caballero. Here. Councilor Pavanessa. Here. Councilor Rosso. Here. Mayor, you have a form. Thank you. Uh, next, we have our, uh, we don't have any, uh, right? Right. No, no proclamations. We'll try and do that at the, I have one to give out, but to get, get a hold of them and do it hopefully in September. Uh, so our audience of citizens, next up. Do we have anybody signed up? No? Okay, so no one signed up. Anyone wishes to speak? Art? Yep, come on up. Art Powers of Worthington Ridge. Uh, I didn't intend to speak tonight, but I saw, see on the agenda you had the, the stump program or, or uh, consideration. Uh, and I uh, had thoughts on it, and I expressed them before, but I'd just like to express them again. Uh, yes, Worthington Ridge is in the historic district, and there's, what, 20 or 30 stumps there, and I know that you're going to discuss that. But <coughs> my thought was that, uh, and I brought up before, that we have a three-year program. There are stumps all over town now from uh, b being cut down uh, because of the interference with the wires, and the, you know, the, some have been trimmed, and they look like they should be cut down. But if we had a three-year program, which would not uh, be a, a burden on the, the budget in the town, I think it would be a good idea uh, and get all of those stumps out of the way and then have a horticulturist to uh, tell us what kind of trees we should plant in their place. Certainly the historic district should have trees. I, c I can remember as a, as a little boy, and I hate to go back that far, but uh, in 1938 when you had the hurricane, Worthington Ridge was uh, just loaded with trees. You couldn't see... Uh, the sun in the summer on the street because there were so many trees shading it. And uh, after the 38 hurricane, they lost 60, 70 percent of the trees. They removed the stumps and they planted trees. And the irony is now in Worthington Ridge, some of those trees are 80 years old and they're the ones that they had all the trouble with. So history repeats. So I, I just was thinking in the long term uh, on the stump program that uh, and I know that you, you people are, are considering it, so I appreciate that. But if we could uh, have a three-year program, as I said, and, and go all over town where the stumps are uh, a hazard in any way, uh, and also it uh, hinders the beauty, of course, the, the streets, and, uh, and remove those, those uh, stumps and, uh, and then get uh, trees planted in their place, and I think it helped to make this town be as beautiful as it ever was. So thank you. Thanks, sir. Anyone else? Yes, sir. John O'Brien, 12 Vineyard. Um, I want to bring up the town garage to Wash Bay again because uh, it is pretty critical. Um, the Wash Bay, during the winter time, when the town employees are washing the frames of the truck, they're basically uh, it's a great asset. They're prolonging the uh, life of these frames on it, but the working conditions, very poor. They're putting golf shoes on with spikes so they don't slip and fall and hurt themselves. Um, I think as mayor, I brought this up before, if you could find time to go down to the town garage and talk to them or take a look at it. And uh, it's something that's a, a safety. Mm -hmm. It's not going to go away with me, you know, thing, because uh, picture yourself, 10 degree weather, washing down a frame that has salt on it when they're doing basically us a service 
staying up all night plowing and sanding and salting our roads. And we do them a service, giving them three walls and a heater so they don't slip and fall instead of giving them uh, golfing shoes. Thank you. Thank you. We, uh, did we talk about that before? No. We're going to remedy that. Uh, all right, well, we'll talk about it. Uh, anyone else? Public? From the public. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close the audience of citizens and move on to our um, consent agenda. I'd like to make a motion to um, pull topic or cons consent agenda item, uh, item number five and make that 1A. Okay. We have a counselor that has a uh, All right. question on that one. Make a second on that. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. I will move that to 1A. Okay. okay. All right. So we got we have our consent agenda. We have um, obviously had this before us before. You know, earlier this week we we received this packet. So we read everything in our consent agenda. Mostly in our consent agenda, we don't typically go over every item, but we we generally have uh, in this one. Uh, mostly donations, some to the library, Berlin Animal Controlled, approved Berlin High School Class of 2020 to sell food and beverages, at high school events. So we, have, we took one out, and we had number five. We moved that. So. so we've all read them, and if we don't have any comments or questions, we'll go ahead and take a motion. Okay, yeah. I'll make a motion to accept the four remaining items in the consent agenda. Second. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? Uh, Mr. Yep. Mayor. Yes. Um, just uh, looking at some of these numbers, these are completely distinct from some of the um, donations we've seen in the past. I mean, there's a, these are significant. Mm -hmm. uh, number one is six thousand eight hundred and eighty-three dollars mm -hmm. from the Edward Dunham Estate for repairs to the cemetery, um, South Middle Cemetery. Uh, so that's an important one, and then. Um, uh, another large one here is $5,239 to the library and 5160 for the Friends of the Library. So um, I just wanted to congrat or say thank you to the people who are donating it or the estates of that are donating this because they're uh, fairly large. Yes, definitely good comment. And, and yeah, no, the library is uh, doing quite well as it's great to see the uh, – Maintenance and repairs for the cemetery too, getting a nice donation. So absolutely, thank all of the, all the donors all the time that donate to different things in the town. It's always great that they uh, supplement what, what we all can do. So, yeah, point point taken. Okay, so we're all set with that. So now we're at one. Uh, oh, oh, vote. Oh, vote. I'm sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank you. And we are on one A. Right? Is that what we have? Yes. Yeah. Which, yes. Where were Which was one is the Dura Construction five. LLC. Right. Yeah. Donating all labor materials to extend the section of the additional sidewalk for bricks, approximately four feet by 25 at the Veterans Memorial Park, valued at $1,500. Okay. So, now the reason why I pulled this is because uh, town councilor. Oh. Uh, yes. Charlie Payne and I said this is his company and he's making the donation. Yes. So I wanted to recognize him for that, but I, th I think he wanted to abstain from voting anyways. As an item in the consent agenda. So gotcha. that's why. I gotcha. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. uh, if we have no further questions, we'll go ahead and take a motion. Okay. Move to accept the donation of a sidewalk segment uh, four feet by 25 feet at the Veterans Memorial Park valued at $1,500. Second. Thank you. Uh, any further uh, comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank one you. Abstention. Thank you, one abstention. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you for the donation. It's great. Okay, so we got agenda item one. Agenda item one is to uh, the donation for the Rex Smith Memorial Tennis Courts sign valued at $700 and 
attached in your package shows where the sign would go and a sample of what the sign would look like. Okay. Excellent. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, we heard we heard about this, right? Last time, I think, we heard some of this. So we'll go ahead and take a motion on this. Sure, I move to approve the acceptance of a sign at the Rex Smith Memorial Tennis Courts with a value of $700, including installation from the Berlin High School Athletic Department. Second. Thank you. Uh, any further uh, comments or questions? I have one question. What yes. time will the dedication be? Good question. Yeah, that's a good question. Anybody? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, go. Yes. Okay. Yeah, what time? August 8th at 5.30. 5.30 p.m.? 5.30. August 8th. Thank you. August 8th. Thank you. Thank you. Very great. Uh, so, any more comments or questions? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Motion carries. Great. Okay, number two. Number two is a bid waiver request from the police department. So um, there are approximately um, the purchases that are made through multiple vendors. Um, it's part of the contract for the employees to buy through multiple vendors. And at the beginning of the year, they're not aware of what they are buying. So this is a bid waiver uh, request for the council. And Deputy Chief Chris is here. Answer any questions you may have. Okay. Not sure we have any questions. Do we have any questions? Would we like the Deputy Chief up here? No. So I think we're good to take a motion. Okay. Move to waive the town's bidding procedures and approve issuing purchases, purchase orders in excess of $10,000 but altogether not to exceed the budgeted amount of $89,104 for the following uniform vendors, Security Uniforms, Inc., New England Uniform, Connecticut Police Supply, Galls, and Mickey Finns, as this is in the best interest of the town. Second. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Any further comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Three. <clears throat> Item number three is a revision of the contract with tie and bond additional general consulting services for the 586 Deming Road environmental assessment project. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, yes, um, <clears throat> this is the former Micron building on Deming Road. Uh, we had received a grant from the state about two and a half, three years ago for some assessment. Um, the property owner had put in some matching money. We still do have some of those monies left. This is $2,000 to pay tie and bond to assist us and the property owner with kind of next steps. Uh, there are environmental issues. They're looking at a reuse either to lease it or sell it. This is continuing the work we're doing with tie and bond, um, essentially just continuing the work. Uh, the money is in place from the donate, excuse me, from the property owner's portion of it. So essentially we're just continuing looking for $2,000 to continue the work that they're doing to hopefully take next steps and get it reoccupied and reused. So are they um, are they done with like the is it cleaned up yet or are they still no no the still? no the only thing that was done so far was the assessment work oh. um, that we'd gotten what happened was is I want to say between this and another property called one hundred fifty thousand dollars in assessment monies this and Woodlawn and then the property owners each put in a thirty percent match okay. um, so Woodlawn at this point we're hoping there'll be some steps soon they're doing some additional testing themselves with their own monies this property the family that owns it is trying to kind of decide next steps because the Willowbrook is in the rear there's a couple different issues involved not just the ground but also the water so that's why tie and bond is again involved in this and we've worked closely with them the entire time so it's really no no big change it's just a little couple extra dollars for consulting services for tie and bond do we think the um, contamination or whatever is there do we have any clue if it's serious or we don't know we don't know yeah hence the testing but we, They've given some decent sized estimates. The, the the biggest issue is the kind of reuse. If you want to knock the building down, and it's going to be one cost. If you're going to be taking it and putting pavement over it, it'll be a lower cost. Um, and it also really depends. They've talked about warehouse, manufacturing. The big issue is the property. It's a large property. It's about 20,000 square feet. Not a lot of parking. Uh, if you look at our, our regs for retail, 
would not be possible to put a pure retail in there. So it's really been a challenge. Um, it happened to be the, the dad who ran the business passed away. It's now his heirs yeah. are working on it. So we continue to work with them, hoping we can come up with a plan. But the big issue at this point is because of the unknowns, why tie and bond is still very involved. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Yes. Is there any um, effect from the New Britain dump on this property? Any leaching? We're not sure at this point. I don't think onto the property itself, in the brook itself, is one of the things they're not sure about. Um, one of the things Ty and Bond is looking at is, do they go in and do testing in the brook? Um, because the brook goes through a, gr a large portion of New Britain, it could be challenging to find out where did something come from versus where did it end up. So that's really part of what they're trying to decide, because I know that could either be a, no, it's not from us, or opening a, a can of worms at this point. So really, to, to be truthful, I'm not certain, but that's really part of the discussion right now, because that is something that is of major concern, because the brook has been there the entire time the manufacturing happened for the last 150 years in both New Britain and Berlin. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Hearing none, we're going to take a motion. Okay, I move to waive the town's bidding process to authorize the interim town manager to enter into a $2,000 contract for additional general consulting services in the amount of $2,000 to be paid from account uh, Brown, Brownfield's assessment, Woodlawn and Deming Roads account. Second on that? Second. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And we're still here. Four. And before, uh, perhaps we can do a little bit of show and tell. Sure, <laughs> me again. Novart project, uh, some more environmental testing. Yes, what this is here is we're looking for $3,800 uh, from an existing grant we have from the state to Loretto Engineering uh, with the project we're looking at, which is this train station project through Newport. The boulevard is going to be going through a piece of land that DOT currently owns. Um, essentially, we're looking for Larero to do some environmental testing on that. And if you give me one second, I'll kind of point out on the map where this is. This is essentially the piece up here, which is just north of 889. Just, uh, could, you, could you just bore the... Sure. Let's hold it up and just point so the audience at least knows what also knows what we're talking about. The map here is the proposed project on the town-owned parcels next to the train station. Just north of those parcels, I'll show you, is a little piece of state owns that the boulevard will be going through that we need to do some testing on. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the chalkboard effect. Um, we are working with DOT right now on getting the approvals, permits, and licensing in order to go across their property. Um, essentially, the reason this is being done is to make sure before any work is done to the boulevards put in that we know what's there before we start disturbing the ground. Um, essentially, for our own protection, the town's protection, as well as the developer itself, we want to make sure we know what we're going into in case any additional actions need to be taken before construction. Yes. If, if a problem is found, would we be responsible for the cleanup or would the state since they own the property? We, we would likely go back to the state and talk to them about the cleanup because it is their property. Sorry. What, what was that now? Oh, uh, the question was um, if contamination is found, would we take care of it or the state? And I said we would go back to DOT and have a discussion with them because it is their property. It's not ours. We're just asking for access over it for our project. I hope it's a state. It's their property. It is. Why they they actually they up, took right? it by, uh, I believe, either eminent domain or purchased it from Conrail itself. Oh, okay. um, the piece we're talking about is a smaller piece of the larger one that ended up having them have the entire train station project and mostly parking lot is what the land ended up being. So I hope I'm envisioning this to be pretty risky. Right, because if something were to be found, that could potentially stall the project from proceeding, right? If, if something is found, we essentially would work with DOT and they would have to work with their own environmental consultant for a plan uh, on what to happen with it. I mean, the good news is we're not looking to put anything on it except a road. 
So if contamination is done, I believe it could then be capped with the tar. But again, that, that is not my area of expertise. Right. But I know essentially what Larero will do is they'll test it, they'll make a recommendation to us on possible next steps. I mean, the good thing is, too, is this is coming out of existing grant funds that we have right, right. already. But yes, it, it is definitely something of concern why we think it's important for the almost $4,000 to make sure we're not stepping into something that could be a much deeper hole, literally and financially. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, that's the problem with that whole, you know, development's great. It's all great there, but we all know that was, you know, there was factories there. There was, I think, gas stations there. There's all kind of things around that train station in, the, in our history. So as we go to develop it, obviously there's the uh, contamination and pollution from prior um, businesses there has is, is, is been an issue on other pieces too, obviously. So just another one we got to check before we go forward with it. Absolutely. Well, it's yeah. ironic, but <laughs> the, the gr ground that was clean there was cleaned by the state. They purchased the old IUD uh, okay. garage, which had gas tanks in, in this. Right. Okay, right. So yeah. uh, my recollection is it's close enough, I think, to be able. Oh, that's good. Yeah, we've so, so far we've gotten very good cooperation from DOT because they realize that the the monies that both the state and the federal government put in for the rail line and now this private funding coming in, they've they've been very cooperative so far, and we hope they will continue to be so. Yeah, they want to develop. They want it. They want a okay. development around the TOD zone in the TOD zone there by the train station. So yeah, hopefully they'll, if there is a problem, move uh, quickly. Well, it, well, I'm sorry, it is the state, right? Well, we'll try and push it to move quickly, but uh, they did put up, though, that I got to say, you know, they put up a beautiful train station there. They really did. I mean, they did a great job. Uh, it's it's very nice, and I guess the right, I think the ridership's doing pretty well, too, so that's that's phenomenal for, for Berlin, too. That's that's great. All right, so any other, if not, uh, any other questions? We'll go ahead and take a motion. Okay, I move to waive the town's bidding process and authorize the interim town manager to enter into a $3,900 contract amendment with Loriero Engineering for soil testing for the portion of the boulevard to be located on the connector property owned by DOT to be paid from the steep boulevard Berlin train station account. Second. Second. Thank you. Any further uh, comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. Chris. Number five. Number five is an item that was discussed previously to uh, get some more information about stump removal. Um, Mike Ahern, Director of Public Works, done some research and has attached some uh, material with the package, but he's going to walk us through that. Good evening. How are you doing, Mike? Um, the saga continues. So at the June 18th uh, meeting, um, Members of the town council had additional questions. So in your packet is, I think the basic question is, how much would it cost for us to buy a stump grinder of a suitable size to do it ourselves in-house? So we went back. Um, I got like five quotes from Parks and Grounds. <clears throat> the lowest horsepower rating that they would accept is the 37 horsepower Rako, which with the trailer is about, no, in round numbers, $28,000, $27,000. The, the horsepower ratings, actually, they, they gave me costs up to 55 horsepower, and some of those went up to 40 and $55,000. Some of them you could actually ride on, but this is the lowest um, one that they're <laughs> willing to accept if the town council wants to. This is the, the picture we have? Yeah, this that's it. This looks like uh, we are assaulting some uh, military uh, yeah. operation here with this thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, one uh, big stump it's a grinder. stout machine, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, and part of their... Um, recommendation was they rented a 25 horsepower unit to do the school stumps recently right. that was thirteen hundred dollars a week which I think someone had asked about the rental rate how much was it thirteen hundred dollars a week okay. um, and that was too slow um, you know, they always want more horsepower but they said it took um, they did one large stump and it took them almost two hours just to do that so the rate was and they also talked to a few tree companies and found out what they're using so um, their there are reservations with this approach, though, because they realize that it's not just the machine, it's people to man it, the dump truck and all that. So if the town council chooses to purchase or fund this, it also comes with a price where you're pulling people off the you know, school grounds, the parks, um, and all the other things that the parks and grounds folks are doing. So 
Um, our recommendation would be to probably try the subcontractor approach first. And if we choose to go this way, we still can do this, but to have a piece of machinery that may sit for months and not be used versus getting a subcontractor in to just knock out 10 a day um, might be the wisest course, or at least that's what I'm hearing from the staff. And you said um, in your uh, write-up here it would be four to 600 per stump subcontractor? Yeah, I'm using a unit cost of $500 a stump. Okay. So, um, and if, you know, we follow a, a multi-year project, you could do a lot of stumps with $10,000 or $8,000 a year um, over time, and we can get rid of the ones on Worthington Ridge first or whatever priority areas you, you know, you uh, target, and then we can go from there. Relieves. So, uh, oh, sorry. No, I'm sorry. I, I, have we made that determination as to whether or not we're going to be taking trees off of private property? People's no, that's another, that's another issue. Yeah, yeah that's, a, yeah. that's another issue. So, um, which we could talk about tonight too, but so, and, and we will. So, all right, yeah, go ahead. Has anybody explored an attachment for an existing machine? Uh, uh, the Bob, well, yeah, the Bobcat, that's about 10,000, yeah, that's about $10,000. And uh, they're, I think, somewhat reluctant because the Bobcat is in use. In fact, it just got out of the garage. It was just repaired because it was, um, you know, essentially it was uh, in use and, and it was offline. They use it all the time. They, were, they would rather have a standalone machine versus a $10,000 attachment you put on the front. But we didn't, I think the cost is around $10,000, but it may also not have the horsepower needed to do at the rate, and we haven't, I haven't looked at the uh, rate of that particular attachment, but they, their preference is to have a standalone machine. Yeah. I'd like to have a new Cadillac too, but that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. I, I still think they would prefer a subcontractor approach first to see, you know, if we want to do this at all. And these are stumps in the right of way, not on private property. So that, these are that's the question. Yeah, this is, right. the, yeah. this is focusing just on town trees and town stumps. Uh, on, the, on any right of way, yeah, not not on private property. No. So, yeah. I, I'm in agreement, Mike. I think we should do this on a trial basis. Set some money aside and make it a townwide policy. Maybe it's tied in to when we're doing sidewalks in certain neighborhoods and roads. And then if there aren't any tree stumps on any of those roads, you backtrack and hit some of these, you know, high profile areas like Worthington yeah. Ridge or we, we Farmington can prioritize Avenue. that. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm not opposed to to trying it out uh, on a you know, let the subcontractors do it for now. Yeah. And I also check with Eversource. They do not have stump removal in their vegetation management plan. Their approach is low, cut it as low as they can um, and then just move on. So there's no magic bullet on that end. Of course not. No, of course we, not. We, we didn't expect that. But we didn't expect that. At least I confirmed it. We tried. I asked the question. Yeah. You no, know, I, I have to agree with some of the comments made by Mr. Powers. You know, you see some of these trees and they look like, apple cores that somebody bit into and they just look just as worse if, if you know oh, you mean like leaving it, it when they leave them up around the, like this and they're like yeah. why didn't they just cut the tree down it looks awful um but i guess we'll, we'll move forward um, so do we agree that um obviously it would be uh not not on private property i'm sure we're all in agreement on that right right everybody agree yes yep. yes and then could could we so if we so what do we think we agree let's try the contractor first Absolutely. yeah use and, and the see historic what, district as a trial yeah well, well I, what i was thinking is let, let's get a, a i mean we can i'm sure some are on the historic district too but can we get a i know you had a list before but if for the whole town to be fair to everybody we we get the, the worst ones first or the ones in the worst locations public safety wise i'm thinking first mm -hmm. and then we go from there obviously um so instead of doing all of them, just pick the ones that earmark the ones that are well, safety-wise? I think if we get a, a list and get a cost, right, so we know how much money we can at least start with, if we're going to do like a, I, I think, um, I, I would envision we put this in the budget maybe every year for, we do some every year. I mean, I don't think we can't do them all in a year, be right. cost prohibitive, but if we get the most, the ones that are most unsafe first, and then maybe take a, prioritize it, Mike, somehow? Just so, and then we'll come back and we can just. And, look and at it. Uh, there was someone else I think who would ask, how many stumps are there? You know, and yeah. I got ranges from between three and five hundred stumps okay. in the well, public right of way. So now, not all of those were in front of people's houses, but okay. right. um, that's the order of magnitude we're talking about. I don't think we're going to have to do all of those. Okay. They'll 
Oh, yes. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, that's what, yeah. I was, <laughs> that's what I was afraid of, but yeah. yeah do, no, we, oh. do we prioritize Worthington Ridge because it's in a historical district? Uh, well, I mean, uh, I, I think that's, um, you know, I mean, if it's just a matter of looking nice, uh, I, we want it to look nice, but I, uh, to me, public safety always comes first, and yeah. I, would, I would at least check, we, you know, what, whatever. I just if we yeah. can do and we can probably do some there. Yeah. yeah. You know. I think there are a few on some corners where yeah. um, those would probably be addressed first. Yeah. Especially if there's sidewalks and a lot of pedestrian activity, you want to take those out of there. Right. And if we have a project that's going to go forward, we would take care of those anyway, but uh, we could take them out in advance. And then the historic district obviously is a focus, an area of focus. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think there's yeah. some on Worthington Ridge that are look like they're impeding sidewalks anyway so yeah. I mean yeah they're some right. of them are pretty prominent yeah maybe not all of them to start with but, yeah. but at least if we include some of them in along with other parts of town that maybe there's I can think of one right now there's one on some on Farmington Avenue there I think that yeah. kind of in a bad location so c can you f for us for the next meeting I, I guess the next meeting is first meeting in September but can you just give us your give assessment. It a shot. <laughs> yeah, give it a shot. Yeah. Three no, to five hundred. I mean, I'm just I'm whittle sure, it down. I'm sure Parks and Grounds and Highway has some stumps that yeah. they know of that yeah. either in the area the Parks and Grounds guys might have might hit them with their you know when they're plowing the sidewalks or shoveling the sidewalks, so we can put a list together. Do you have any quantity in mind, or do you just want us to start prioritizing a list? Maybe prioritize the list. Let's see how big it yeah. is and figure out how much it will cost for this year. Obviously, we have no money in the budget, but we can hopefully. Uh, come up with something to maybe start the program sure. at least with with the most unsafe ones and then wor work to down the list over the you know I, I don't know what right. time you guys public works would have to do it but if there's a time of year maybe you if there's any time of year that you're slow which probably is not too many it's times before the winter and after the paving season that, yeah. that to me would yeah, be you know kind of late fallish right. that that's what of, I kind of yeah. thought would be the yeah. time you would do it but if it's a subcontractor you know that yeah. That might not pull. It'll have traffic control and maybe one person right. be with them. So, uh, but anyway, late fall to me seems like a good time to do tree work if you can plan it. Right. Okay. So, if we can just have a little bit more info and then we could make a decision on how much money we have to come up with. I mean, we don't have it in the budget, so we'll have to find it somewhere. But I think we can. Um, does that make sense? Everybody, yep. just get a little bit. We just get priority. Let's see where they're at. See how dangerous they are, and from there we could go to uh, some decision. While you're while you're here, I'm just the 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 road, um, Butternut Lane. Right. It comes to mind. Uh, so if you would just comment on oh, what what the approach was, what happened, and why, yeah. are, and how are people upset about it or um well questions? i'll let me go yeah, into what we did and was, why we did it and then the story, how yeah. we're going to do it in the future <laughs> um butternut lane is a, a road that had the center line was separating there was a, a there's a sewer trench that runs down the center of the road and it was getting a little lumpy and cratering and we were responding to you know here and there pothole and, and repair requests over time so we were doing the back of we were doing griswold school and the playground behind griswold school which has an access sort of way a little mini road that runs to the playground we redid that and that went right out to butternut lane we had the paver there we had the machinery there so the highway super and i sat down and jim horrible as well and we said you know why don't we just it's called a shim coat like a leveling course right down the center which was the worst part of the road when that when that was done which we thought was a great job it looked like a big black stripe because it's fresh asphalt and um, the people in the, in the, uh, on Butternut Lane thought the contractor just half, half did it and left. <laughs> and that was not the purpose. The purpose was really to patch and level the worst part of the road in order to nurse it along until we can pave it. And that we did it at a fraction of the cost of paving it, as well as time. So we got some responses back, uh, why did they half do it, this and that. So I've been responding, I think you as well and a few other people. Um, I responded to an email from a resident, and I think that took care of some of it because he, I think, spread the word. So I haven't gotten any more responses back or inquiries. But lesson learned, if we do this, and we have this approach for a couple more roads because we don't have enough money to pave all the roads, um, we will send out letters, and you will sign them, Mr. Mayor, um, so that we will, in advance, notify these residents of what they're going to see. <laughs>
Well, we'll, t we'll take the heat too. But uh, I think it was a lack of advance notice. We did it real time and we thought it was a good approach. And then the residents were a little maybe taken aback with the, um, they thought it was meant to be a complete paving job. It wasn't. It was meant to be something that will improve the road short term. Um, most people will now be dri driving down that portion uh, because it's a full lane width. Um, so that's the butternut lane story. Okay. So I appreciate your um, thoughts to do that and yep. to fix the road in an economical way and right. uh, good intention sometimes. Right. You know, people right. get, I guess, upset when there's change and they don't know about it. I understand that. But I mean, the road, I, I, I didn't, I drove by it, I didn't drive down yeah. it, but it, it's, I mean, it's level I and mean, there's no problems yeah. with what you did, right? It's just if you different. saw the before condition of yeah. that road, it was, uh, you know, uh, I drove it down with Steve Clark, the highway super, and I said, we, you know, Got to do something. Got to do something. Yeah. Either, either we keep doing little bits and pieces of it, right. or we can run it straight down. They were right there. Um, you know, it's like painting the next or painting the next corner of a room when the painter's in there, and you're like, oh yeah, just go ahead and do it. You know, so um, I guess advance notice is required. So maybe that's that next it. Time. Well, I mean, you know, you explained it, and so people are happy. I would, yeah. I would think they'd be I, happy because the road's improved, obviously. Absol absolutely. Yeah. Accomplish the purpose. So that's good. All right, no, I mean, that's great. We'll just, I guess, just notify first, right? Yes. All right, so, <laughs> some learn. I think we all kind of know that maybe sometimes, but that's all right. Okay, we well, appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate that explanation. Thanks a lot. Sure. And, you, and we'll uh, go on to number, and we'll, and we'll, you know, wait and have that on the next agenda. Kate, make sure we get that so the stumps and no move forward with that. Number six. Number six uh, pertains to the uh, golf pros contract. Um, it's contract expires at the end of this uh, calendar year. So the negotiations uh, began and the finance director, the, the golf course director, myself, we met and uh, agreed on a contract. The contract is attached. Terms and conditions, I'll probably have John hit the highlights. I'll go through it. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> again, as the interim town manager has said that we've been negotiating this contract with the former town manager and the um, also the golf commission has weighed in on it and some of the some of the points in the new agreement are it's a three-year contract <clears throat> and the annual sal the annual retainer moves from 62500 to 70000 and that 70000 remains for the entire three years of the contract um, shop staff allowance and starter allowance increases are due to minimum wage, state minimum wage increases. And if you look at the spreadsheet, it kind of gives you an explanation of the minimum wage increases throughout the years of the contract. Um, and some of the rollovers from the previous contract, the golf pro will still receive 6% of the gross revenue from the golf carts, from the gas powered golf carts, <coughs> excuse me and golf, the golf professional will pay 25% of utilities for the pro shop space. Um, the, pro, the, the contract has been reviewed by Corporation Council um, and the total amount for the first, for the initial year of the contract increase is $12,460. Um, and this is, looks to come out of contingency with a transfer. Okay, I know, and I know we spent a lot of time on this. I think it, it took a little bit longer because we were in the middle of changing town managers. So Mr. Healy had looked at it, but then, it, you know, unfortunately in the interim, it got stuck for a while. The town attorney had looked at it, but we, we just came back recently with our new town manager to revisit just a couple options on here to compensate Mr. Bayram at a, at a nice level because we don't want to lose him. We know he's great. Uh, we, we, Timberland's doing great. The uh, Golf Commission's doing a great job out there. Mr. Zook, you know, everyone's uh, taking ownership out there and, and really um, doing, doing a wonderful job. So we, we wanted to keep him. So it took a little bit longer to get to this point, but we did get here now. And I know the Golf Commission, right, Pete, is uh, happy with this contract. Mr. Bayram, I assume, has yes. reviewed it. I've spoken to Mark uh, quite a few times, and yes, he's very he's happy. pleased with that. Yes. Pleased. Everybody's pretty pleased with it? Yes. That's amazing. That's great. Everybody's pretty happy with it. That's uh, Something must be wrong. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, 
Oh, okay, that, that's that's good. I know it, was a, it took a while, and you know, again, just in the interim, it, it took a little bit longer with the changing of the guard. But uh, okay, um, what do you guys think? Questions from the council? Anything? No. Everybody's happy. Good. All right. So that's great. So uh, no other comments or questions. We'll go ahead and take a motion. Okay. I move to approve a budget transfer of twelve thousand four hundred and sixty dollars from contingency to fund the initial year of the golf professionals contract and appropriate to golf pro contractual services and to authorize the interim town manager to enter into a contract with Mr. Byram for services at, as the Timberland golf professional for a period from January 1, 2020 through December 31st, 2022 with the option of a one year extension. Thank you. Second on that? Second. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? Uh, the only thing I'll say is also Mr. Delaney was involved too, and he he's happy too, right? I think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, good. All right, there we go. That's that's it. All right. So if we know there are comments or questions, we'll go. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. So great. Congratulations great. to everyone and Mr. Bayram and. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. Good luck to Timberland. Keeps we keep moving forward. I think we're uh, right. What are we breaking? What are we? Are we breaking even? We, we uh, actually, I don't want to spoil it, but we're, we're looking pretty good this year. Good. good. All right. Uh, if I may, I'd like to thank but, the council. Yeah. Come, yeah. come, just come on up for a minute. Sure, you have to anyway. So <laughs> when, Kate's very upset now, so you don't want to upset Kate. No, no. <laughs> the look. <laughs> yeah, we don't want it. I can smile, but very upset uh, I just want to say on behalf of the Golf Commission, thank you to the council for recognizing Mark Bayram. He's doing a great job. Thank you to the interim town manager. Kate and Kevin and John Zook. Everybody worked together as a team. It was really great. It was fun to fun to work with you guys for this one. And uh, yeah, it was a long road, but uh, as we all know, he gave up quite a bit uh, to stay. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to see that he's rewarded. So thank you. Good, great. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, uh, number seven. Number seven is a request to get into a contract to purchase three uh, 2020 Ford Utility Police Interceptors. And um, requisition amounts and the transfers and the funding is attached to it. Do you have any questions? We have Jim over here. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I'm sorry. Um, I think we're good, really, right? I think we're good. You know what? Just, just one quick, Jim, if you can. Or chief, anybody, either either one. How we doing? Good. You? Good. <laughs> so we're adding these some extra, well, uh, some more vehicles, which is which is all great. Um, so, what's happening? So just give us like, because I, I I get this question too from a lot of people. So the other, uh, so we're adding new vehicles. What happens to all the other? Everything filters down, obviously. Everything filters down. We'll look at what's coming off the road. Uh, we do know that one is an older LTD that we'll probably uh, we'll just get rid of. The other two are going to be a Taurus or, or Tauruses, and those will be filtered into the town's fleet to get rid of some of the older LTDs that are here. Okay. So as those vehicles come off, they'll be analyzed again. We'll look at the repair histories on them. We'll look at the conditions of them, and then we'll put them somewhere within the fleet themselves. So these are three of the the uh, marked patrol cars that were awarded during the budget. Right. The fourth one is going to be an uh, expedition, which is going to be a supervisor's vehicle, and uh, you'll see that in September. So with these vehicles, these vehicles have a six-month lead time from Ford, so we probably won't see these vehicles on the road until April of next year. Okay. So. Um, may I, I don't know if you're better to ask this to the chief, but why do the supervisors have different vehicles? Supervisors carry different equipment in the vehicles that the smaller vehicles. They're a little tighter, um, but with the uh, equipment that's needed for the supervisors to carry to go to different type of, of incidents out there, um, which I'm sure you're familiar with what's going on out there now, uh, they have a bigger cache of basically weapons and protective equipment. Okay. Jim, are, are these the the small interceptors or are these the uh, Explorer class? These are the smaller interceptor. So when Ford Ford was building the Tauruses and the, a, the Explorer interceptor cars, they were all on the same chassis. A lot of people didn't know that, but they were all on the um, 
on a Taurus chassis. Right. The Taurus car went away from Ford when they got away from building cars, and everything went to the Interceptor now, or the Explorer Interceptor for the police department. That's their premier vehicle for the police department now. Oh, and it's big enough. I know there was an issue with the original Interceptor. They have, they, they have a little more room in them than the Tauruses did. The Tauruses, they had a problem between the center rack and the door with all the equipment that they carried on their belts. They were a little tighter. These, you sit up a little higher, and they have a little more room in there, which the guys seem to like them a little better. Thank you. Okay, good. Uh, any other questions? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and take a motion. Okay, I move to approve the purchase of three 2020 Ford Utility Police Interceptors for the police department utilizing the State of Connecticut DAS services contract number 12 PSX 0194 for an amount not to exceed $99,008. Second. Thank you. Any further uh, questions or comments? Hear me now, those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. You steer it from what you got more? Ah, oh, okay. Oh, we're here. Good. All right. Got my couple. other hat on. Now. That's, that, that's <laughs> good. Three you know, it's, gr it's great. Hey, Chief, it's great that I'm glad we were able to add some vehicles and you know, we did do, you know, we had some money in the budget and with all the budget negotiations and in the end it worked out really well because some of that, some of this car money was, you know, actually going to go to the Board of Ed, but they found some money and, you know, projects got taken care of, you got extra cars, so I think all's well that ends well. Uh-oh. So you got you got now, now you got her now you got her mad again. <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> so there. Well, here, come up here. Come up here for a minute. I just want to ask you too about the. Uh, so we. <laughs> Sorry, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> so that's great, and, and the the air conditioning unit. Is working good too, right? And yeah, the, actually, the it, it, it we should have done it years ago. I don't know why yep. we didn't, but yeah. uh, and, I, and I talked to uh, Doug was here earlier. So there's some other stuff he's working on, right? One of the other rooms is there. He is yep. um, right is hot, or, the, or it's working now. I think right. He, the, yeah, the locker room, uh, the men's detective, locker room. Is detective working division well. was hot yep. though. Was it the detective division? Yeah, support services, our training room. Yep. There's some other areas that hopefully down the road after the cell project we'll be able to uh, address. Yeah, good. All right. Can Thank I, you. I Thank. Oh yeah, sure. That car that didn't have air conditioning has it been repaired? Uh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jim, we're in contact uh, all the time about vehicle repairs, and you know, of course, during the hottest days of the year, one of the supervisor vehicles, the air conditioning, knocked off. But uh, th those are one of the vehicles that are, you know, the supervisor's cars are earmarked for replacement. Oh, so. Wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate that. Great. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Number eight. Number eight pertains to uh, upgrade of fire department communications equipment. Do you want to give a quick summary? So as, as you uh, are well aware of the public works department and the fire department are upgrading all their communication equipment this year. We're currently creating an RFP. While we were meeting with the vendors though, we heard that there was a chance for us to save some money on some of the components that we would be buying, and they would be the miniatures for the firefighters. And the savings, if we were to purchase them, actually it was before July, but we had it extended or we got it extended so we can come to a council meeting um, till the beginning of August. What we would be saving is we would be going from a two-year warranty to a five-year warranty on the radios. And the other part of the savings would be we'd be going from a plug-in charger, much like you have on your phones, to a desktop charger where it's a drop-in charger. Um, so with those, if, if we were to purchase the radios, we would be saving uh, close to $19,000, $19,800 on just those items. We thought that it would it'd probably be, um, you know, I had, a, I had an old person once tell me, and we all know him, Doc McIntosh. Mm -hmm. um, back a long time ago, he says, you take care of the pennies and the dollars will fall where they may. And this is just basically taking care of the pennies because the dollars are going to fall and you're going to see that savings come up. So we figured that we'd bring it to you and 
see if you agree with us. Sounds like a good deal to me. Um, okay. What do we all think? That's fine. Yes? Yep. Okay, so we'll take a motion. Okay, I move to waive the town's purchasing requirements and purchase 90 Unication G5 miniatures from Marcus Communications for an amount not to exceed $53,640, as this is in the best interest of the town. Second. Thank you very much. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Jim thanks. Nine. Number nine. Number nine is a request to transfer funds to purchase a small van for facilities. Here he is. Yes. <laughs> How are we doing, Kevin? We're doing well. How's everybody else doing? <laughs> um, this continues what we've been able to do the last couple of months with contingency funds. Um, we've now had a, we have the preliminary close. We've finished paying the bills, um, taking in the money, so to speak, and, um, and been able to look at FY19 results. Now we want to take the opportunity to potentially address some items that have gone unaddressed for a couple of years, but um, while not necessarily the, the largest items, will help as we, we operate day to day. This particular one is designed to pr uh, purchase a smaller van, so it's not a, a large van, but one of the smaller vans that you would see to be used by in the facilities group by our custodial folks. The, the folks who, who support this building and the community center and the library also take care of animal control, the senior center, um, some other facilities around different parts of the town, and end up using personal vehicles to move between the facilities. This is an opportunity to have a town vehicle so they can move between, and also if they need to, to carry equipment in there. And um, you know, the intent is to use surplus funds from two accounts. One is health insurance, the other is telephone. Um, Health insurance is one where you can end up with surplus depending on people's election. They elect a less expensive plan. Um, or if you have turnover, you go one or two months, the health insurance cost is gone. You, you never have to recover it, and it ends up being a surplus. The telephone surplus was derived from an audit that we did during the fiscal year. Um, we worked together with an external consultant who worked purely on a contingent basis, a one-time fee based on the savings, we were able to identify uh, substantial savings on town phone system. We basically had a number of uh, lines, if you will, in the wall that weren't being used, but we were still paying for them. The state also entered into a contract with Frontier for an identical plan that was cheaper, so we simply said, we want to move to that plan. I think if you asked anybody in town, they wouldn't even know that we made any changes to the phone system and we're looking at saving about $20,000 a year on the phones. So we want to use some of that one time to purchase the van and, uh, and help the facilities group. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Kevin, are, are these the little portable voting machines that we use for every election? That's the next item. Uh, the that would be the next oh, item. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I was looking at that. I was conf confused on the yeah. agenda. It's mixed. They might be right. Something yeah. mixed up. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, uh, go ahead. Yes. yes sir. Um, I'm. I haven't really I'm not averse to this, and I'm, I haven't decided against it. But has um, the option been considered to um, instead of buying a vehicle that we have to maintain, uh, maybe speak to them, seeing if they will consider reimbursement on mileage of their current vehicles. Because um, then at that point, we would be shifting the burden from maintaining the vehicle to them maintaining their own vehicle, but giving them the cash in kind. It'd be less work for staffing and maintaining the vehicle and potentially long term, less money to maintain the vehicle, et cetera, and keep buying a new one. They're already doing it now. So if they get paid extra money in their pocket for it, it kind of seems like a win win. Um, we could do that. It would be one. It would be a change to policy, which we could certainly do. The, the existing policy is we don't reimburse employees for commute between town buildings. It's considered to be a part of your job function is going between buildings as the nature of the job. So we could do that. We could certainly change that policy um, if we wanted to. I guess I would say that this vehicle I would characterize as probably low mileage, low wear, 
long-term vehicle. I wouldn't see this as a vehicle that would be changed every five or seven years. Um, for example, later on, you're going to see a request to transfer some money for a youth services van, and that van travels to West Virginia, upstate New York, Maine, and it's almost 20 years old. This is a vehicle that would be used just around town for between buildings. Um, I think that's possible. Um, I'm just curious from like a cost analysis perspective, like what? Well, the other piece you run into is uh, when they're driving their personal vehicle, you start to get into insurance questions and if, there's, if there were an accident, um, not that I want to put the burden on the town, but if this is a town employee doing town work between town buildings, um, they, they really should be driving a town vehicle. I think that's one of the bigger issues and that we have to consider. Right, exactly. And not only that, when you use your vehicle for work, typically you have to have a different insurance policy with higher there's minimums that yeah, we would require. Exactly, because I've used my own vehicle for work for many, many years, and we have to have a higher insurance policy with deductibles, et cetera. So I really think if they're working on town business, it should not be a personal vehicle at all. It just raises the liability for the town. Isn't there tax implications also, income tax for the employee? If we reimbursed them? Yeah. Well, if it's a reimbursement, if they're identifying the mileage they drove and we reimburse, then they would, that would not be taxable income. That would be a straight, because um, it would be an accountability plan. Right. So. Um, this will be a low mileage, low use vehicle. Do we own any other vans that we could put into this service? I'm not sure who owns all these school vans I see around. Do we own any of those or are they leased? Or? Uh, we do own them. I will say most of the school vans are uh, older. They are high mileage. Um, with I, I know we rotate the police cruisers into other departments. I wonder if we could take a van from another department and rotate it into this role. Uh, I would say to, to be to be candid, we, I would think if you had the Board of Ed here, they would tell you we don't rotate those vans enough. Um, the vans that are being replaced now are between 18 and 20 years old. You're talking 120 to 150,000 miles. Um, we had one lift, one lift van that just simply stopped working this past year. The initial response was, we're going to have to make do with what we have. Uh, there was capital that the board had requested. They had funded the project that was intended for in a different way. And so the money was available, and they've gone out, and now they're purchasing a replacement van. Um, I, I don't think. I don't think you could rely on the Board of Ed van fleet because I'm we push them more. Yeah, is there, yeah. is there a critical vehicle that we could downgrade to this class? Is what I was asking. Um, I mean, I guess <laughs> I would look. Maybe to, not, but it's worth asking the question. I would look to, to Mr. Simons to sit to answer. Uh, he he's our expert on the fleet. If he believes there's something else, I know he's, he's be back. used. <laughs> I know he's an expert at stretching the life into a different department. I was just hoping there was another one we could stretch. <laughs> Doesn't hurt to ask. No, it doesn't hurt to ask. Um, the only thing that I could think of possibly that would be coming off the road for them would be one of the old police cars, um, but those are going to be cars again. Um, so when they go to put buffers and, and their chemicals into the back that they go around cleaning with, I'm not going to say it can't happen, but it is an inconvenience to them. What we did for building maintenance in the previous year was you awarded us $17,500 and took a while, but we were able to find a Ford Transit van, actually, that came out of Washington, D.C., and we had to transfer it up here. And that worked out fantastic. And that's when Dougie came up with the idea that he had some extra funds, that let's do that again and get these other guys into a vehicle mm -hmm. that, that could do the job for them. So as far as the vehicles coming off the road this year, um, the police cruisers are the only thing coming off the road this year. The rack body, that's for the highway department. That was to replace a total vehicle, and there's, we didn't fund anything else. So okay. that's the only oh, that's thing. That's fine. Thank you. You looked at the other options. I appreciate yeah. it. Yes. I'm good. That's all you got? We good? We're good. All right. Any other questions? Move along. All right. So we'll go ahead and take a.
Okay, I move to approve the transfer of $20,000 from the telephone and health insurance accounts to the vehicle accounts in the facilities department in the general fund. Second. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Number 10. Uh, number 10, uh, it's, timing is appropriate with the elections coming up to uh, mitigate some of the challenges you faced at the last election. If this broken, right? Or the uh, left. The voting machine. Yeah, the, um, the town has an existing box truck, and the intent here is to replace the lift off of the back. Um, it doesn't, it's not wide enough, <laughs> fair to say, Doug, um, to support the equipment to, to do it as safely as it should. The town, to figure out if there was a viable alternative, rented a truck for both referendum votes this past year, and the truck worked great. <clears throat> By having it in a box truck, you keep it out of the weather, so if it's raining or of snowing, potentially, <laughs> depending on the election. Um, you're protecting the equipment. You're also protecting the user by having the appropriate lift on the back of the existing box truck. This transfer would allow us to go out, replace the lift that's on the box truck that the town has today with a more appropriate lift for, for safety of people and equipment <clears throat> and to avoid having to rent the truck um, for future elections gives a lot more flexibility. It puts, it puts the opportunity for, for Doug and for the facilities group to schedule the use of our own box truck instead of having scheduled staff to go off, rent a truck, bring it back, take it somewhere else. Um, and then the other thing I'll add from a rental standpoint, <clears throat> because one of our votes took place just after Memorial Day, they had to actually rent the truck and retain it because one of our sites we couldn't get into for because there were Memorial Day events at the site. Um, and so they had to keep the truck for several days. So you're not just renting a truck, you're potentially renting that truck over several days where it's not actually moving, you're just paying. <clears throat> okay. okay, I'll repeat my question. <laughs> <laughs> now we're the right place, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, these are the machines for the voting. Big heavy voting, the old voting machines? These are, yeah, the ones you that- still use those? No, they're not the same machines. It's it's but they're the box is the, the box. The new the new, new ones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're not heavy, are they? They look heavy. They look heavy to me. <laughs> oh, they're bulky. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And they, and you store them in the back when they're not being used. He's trying to avoid coming up to the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> He's smart enough. He's not speaking, so he can get away with it. Okay, he didn't say anything. <laughs> no motions, no nothing. He didn't say a word. He just kind of looked at us like he didn't know what we were talking about. <laughs> no, I think we're good. He offered, but we said no. <laughs> okay. Uh, good? Go. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. All right? We good? Okay. All right, so we're going to take a motion. I move to approve the transfer of $7,500 from the health insurance and, and supplies account in the Registrar of Voters Department to the Vehicles account in the Facilities Department in the General Fund. Second. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Number 11. Number 11, this is the uh, van that was referred in the previous ex as an example. Um, the purchase of a youth van for the youth services is 20 years old? Yes. Um, <clears throat> this is our last transfer out of contingency. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think probably the one, uh, one, of, the, one of the good ones as well. Um, this van carries you know, about 15 kids on various uh, trips that they will go on. They carry uh, equipment down for whitewater rafting in West Virginia. They go to up, upper parts of Maine, upstate New York, um, numerous other places. It is only used by the upbeat director and the director of youth services. So they're the only two who actually drive the van. So both of them had sat down and said, look, we need to replace this van. And as we started having conversations, ironically, the van broke down and had to be towed back. Um, it's been fixed, it's safe. But again, it's, it's nearly 20 years old. Um, the idea here is that Upbeat has some money they've been putting aside to help replace the van. 
the youth services group through the summer programs where people have paid fees in over the years have saved up some money between those two uh, that's twenty thousand dollars this would be a fifteen thousand dollar transfer getting us to thirty five thousand um, dollars to be able to find a replacement van so that for both the individuals for the kids who are participating in the program the adults who are taking them on the program and the equipment um, that the kids would take and the canoes and other things that are carried uh, we want to take those surplus funds and and create a safe environment for them Okay, uh, any questions, concerns? Hearing none, we'll take a motion. Okay, I move to, I move to approve the transfer of $15,000 from the contingency to the vehicles account in the Social and Youth Services Department in the General Fund. Second, thank you, second on that. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> 12. Number 12 had to do with the cumulative negative fund balance in the police construction fund and Kevin's got a plan to uh, <laughs> cover the deficit. They have a plan. They have a plan. They have a plan. Um, included in your, in your notes was a chart that you may recall from the budget hearings where uh, we laid out kind of the ominous liability picture right now for the community. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Since I've been here, one of the questions that I've received from this council, the last council, and the Board of Finances, what can we do to try to address this? Mm -hmm. And I think the last two years I've been saying, well, we're working on stuff and we have an opportunity to address some of this. Uh, we are finally at a point where we can actually take one of these items off the list if, if you so choose. Um, it's taken over two years, but we have finally been able to close out the audit with the state on all four of the roof funds. In completing that, uh, we have surplus funds in each one of those roof projects, and those uh, funds are outlined in the motion on here uh, that are left there. The other piece of it is taking surplus money from FY19 results, and proposing to put that together, and it is certainly not glamorous, but I think it is valuable to the community to actually pay for this negative fund balance. Just a brief bit of history um, as it's outlined there. When the town made the decision to purchase the property for the police station, um, there was a, an ordinance passed authorizing bonding of $2 million. The town bonded $2 million in short-term notes, used 991000 of it to purchase 903 and 913 Farmington Ave. Um, that property also had a building on it and some other items. The property was purchased, but nothing was done for a period of time. When you borrow tax-exempt bonds, you have basically 18 months to use the proceeds. As we got out to 18 months, the money was reallocated to other projects. Fast forward to 2014 and 15, the building was demolished, the property was leveled, work was done to clean it up to the tune of almost $900,000. However, as you'll all recall, <laughs> the bond ordinance failed at referendum. Um, the, bond, the money was never bonded for the project. You have a window of time to be able to issue tax-exempt bonds on a project. So once that project effectively ended, the town had 18 months to issue the tax-exempt bonds. After that, the IRS says, look, you're disconnected from the purpose of the tax-exempt bond um, and therefore we're not going to let you issue them. At the same time, we spent the money. So there was an appropriation that comes with every bond ordinance to spend the money, but we never actually funded it. We didn't budget it in the general fund budget, we didn't transfer from somewhere else, we didn't bond it. It just was spent. So as a result, in our capital projects fund, we have a very large negative balance sitting there. Um, it, it, uh, it could sit there forever if you chose to, and it's not apparent on our financial statements because we've had a couple of other large projects, the biggest one being the high school. If you have a negative $900,000 balance in one fund and you're spending $83 million to build a high school, that $83 million will overwhelm the negative, and when your financials are produced, everything's a positive. 
if you fast forward out a few years, at some point we will finish the high school project, that money will come off. Um, at some point we won't have all of the bridges and those projects on the books and the, this will expose the negative balance. Um, it's not fiscally prudent. Um, this is an opportunity to clear that negative balance once and for all and, and pay for the work that was done when we purchased the property and clear it um, without raising taxes, without asking for additional funds, um, and to clear it and have that gone for good. So as, as I talked about, when we talked about at the budget hearing, the various lines that we have for liabilities, this would be an opportunity to literally wipe one of those right off. It's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Out raising taxes. <laughs> Sorry. Getting rid of liabilities, I'm all about it. Oh I'm my God, it. yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. Got me excited. <laughs> so. I will caution you because I, I said I would, so I will, put it, <laughs> I will put it out there. I did receive a call from the chair of the Board of Finance who indicated he had spoken with some members. Uh, they would prefer to wait until November to take this up. Um, I am up, I'm working from the guidance of our, our audit partner, so the, the partner of PKF, our auditors. When we had our pre-audit meeting, as we do every year in May, his recommendation was you are better off transferring before you close the books than having a large surplus balance and assigning it. Um, first off, it, it's just, it's consistent with your approach. If you had a strategy, you're executing the strategy, then you want to complete it, and then the financials you're producing are more indicative of what you're trying to do. The second part is it can send a, a bad message to any users of your financials that it almost appears of a, almost a windfall and then, hey, what do we do with this? And that's not what we did here. This was a concerted effort over more than two years between the town and the Board of Ed to work with the state and close out the roof funds as well as um, you know, working through to, to generate the surplus that we're seeing at the end of FY19. So I think it's a better reflection on the community and more indicative of what everybody's been trying to do, which is to address the liabilities by transferring it now. I'm just curious if you know, <clears throat> you may not know, um, the logic to wait till November is what, if we know? Um, I, uh, I didn't ask, but uh, I'll, I'll let everybody infer. <laughs> Um, uh, so, I mean, so there's no... I just, I, I told him that I would communicate that message. Um, and so, uh, should you choose to pass this and decide to move forward, then um, it, it will have to end up on the, the Board of Finance agenda um, one way or another for them to, to discuss. And so apparently, from what we're hearing, they won't vote, vote on it, or they won't vote it through? I, I don't want to say for the Board of Finance. It was a call know. from the chairman, so I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to say that that's indicative of all six of them. So the board. Of, so the chairman of the board. So the Board <laughs> of Finance is tasked with our financial health, and we have a way to do some good things for our financial health. Yet they want to wait for November. He asked me just to communicate that yeah. message, so I'm, I'm communicating. Okay. I mean, if there was some, if there was a reason, I guess you know we'd like to hear it. I suppose. Well, I mean, if we all vote in the affirmative and it goes to them, they're going to have a discussion. Yeah, we'll I guess. Find out I guess we could hear it then. On record. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay, whatever. Again, <laughs> some things are always very interesting. Okay. Well, so that's what they think. We're not. We are not often on the same page with our board of finance, but that's okay. That's why we have two separate bodies, and that's that's okay. Yeah. Um, all right. What else? Any questions? What are we all? What are we thinking here? Uh, Makes sense. Want a motion? Yeah. Let's do a motion. Good. Missing, but I'm gonna the be able to figure that out. <laughs> oh yeah. Where is the motion? It's not here. Is there That's no okay. motion? Was this That's a okay. back? Was it? it looks like not? the back. Oh, it's on the back. No. It's on the back. No. Oh, it's on the back. No. We don't have it. We have this on the back. Never got this. 
So we don't have the second page. Oh, we don't have no. that back. Ah. Oh. Hey, I'm going to fire my staff. Here you go. Right. <laughs> Just kidding. Just we got it. <laughs> well, it's on the agenda, but I want to make sure it's the, the yeah. right. Yeah, we really did get a kit. Yeah, don't fire anybody. It's the same. <laughs> okay. I move to approve the transfer of $862,000 from the various accounts detailed on the town council action request to the transfer from other funds account in the police construction fund. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Any further uh, comments or questions? Good idea. Let's get it done. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, great. Thank you. And we have one more. One more. <laughs> one more. That's all right. That's some more. So we always got more. This is the last, barring any audit adjustments, this will be the last of the traditional year end transfers. Um, our police force was asked to support the GHO. Cromwell needed additional support, as well as a few other areas. So late in the year, um, we incurred some extra duty officer costs. These are reimbursed. Uh, at this point, I'm requesting a transfer because the alternative would be to ask for an unbudgeted appropriation and go through about three meetings. We have the money to move it. Ultimately, when the books are closed, the money coming in from these external sources will flow to the same place that the money would if we transferred it. So at the end of the day, it will both end up in fund balance. This is just a more direct way to cover the cost. <coughs> Makes sense. <coughs> All right. Go ahead and take a motion. Okay. Move to transfer $14,000 as detailed on the accompanying spreadsheet to cover higher than budgeted expenditures and identified accounts. Second. Thank you. Further comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Um, before you go, just for the record, just for that last vote, the, not this one, the last one. Didn't you say that, just for the record, so I, I heard it correctly, our independent auditors thought that was uh, within standard, you know, I mean, good they recommend accounting principles to do. Recommendation was to transfer within the fiscal year, and, and we're considered within the fiscal year until the audit is closed. Gotcha. So. Okay. Just <laughs> wanted to make that clear. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Thank uh, number 14. Uh, number 14 is a service agreement renewal for the town hall chiller. Like the Sourcewell contract, I would have uh, Doug Solak come up now, right? Come up here. You can come up yep. now. Now, now you Doug can come, come up. up. Yeah, I've been waiting it. all this time. <laughs> good evening, Corey. Uh, just hey, yeah, doing, Doug? good. good. Uh, yeah, this is just a uh, annual renew of our factory authorized service agreement with Carrier Corporation for the Town Hall Chiller, keeping us cool through the, the heat wave. So. <laughs> yeah, let's hope it's over, huh? Okay. All right, we did same, so same, nothing different with this. Same, just a, a annual renewal, a, a small little minimal percentage increase just due to labor rates and materials. Okay, your motion. All right, I move to utilize the source well contract number 030817 CAR and enter into a one year contract with the Carrier Corporation for a full service maintenance agreement for the town hall chiller in the amount of $12,754. Second. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. 15. This fund pertains to uh, bid award and contract approval for the renovations to the McGee High School Blast Classroom. Mm. And uh, we have some material in the background. Gives you certification, efficiency of funds, and the other bid pricing that you received. Do you want to add anything, Doug? Yeah, the, the Board of Ed recognized the need to expand uh, the program space um, from, from the elementaries into the middle school. Um, this classroom made the most sense to build out due to its former status as a home economics classroom. So it had all the features needed um, that this space requires. So even though the cost seems as much to build a house, it was um, a lot of work involved in, in making the space what they need for the program. So. Um, went through the design, met with all the staff. Um, they, they gave us their input and feedback on to make sure the space was as best as it could be for the program um, that went out to bid. And we had a lot of interest, luckily, and the numbers were right on track with the project budget. So we're hoping that this firm will meet the need and get everything completed. Great. Th this is the classroom, right? We I think we talked about in the budget mm -hmm. uh, time, right, that we were going to fund it, but then they found funded in the uh, funding in their 
end of, end of your budget. So we were able to take that hundred grand we were going to give to the board of ed, and that's what we bought the uh, new police cars with. So that's great. Okay. Uh, any questions? Yeah, Doug? Doug, are they trying to get this done before the school starts? Um, the major, the bulk of the demo work and disruptive work is scheduled to be completed by the end of August, and then the contract uh, references a substantial completion by the end of October. Okay. Um, so we'll, we will provide sure. access during a school day. Luckily, that room is, is on the, the perimeter of the building. There's sure. a stairway uh, egress in and out, um, and most of the work won't be too disruptive, so they'll, they'll all be you know, pre-qualified with their approved passes and badges and working in a secured area. So. Okay, thank you. Okay, a motion. Okay, uh, I move to award bid number 2019-19 to MA and M Inc. Uh, DBA Aresco Construction Company of Middletown, Connecticut for an amount not to exceed $183,700, which includes a 10% contingency for renovations to the McGee School Blast classroom and authorize the interim town manager, uh, Roche, to sign the contract agreement. Second. Thank you. Any further uh, comments or questions? Are we none? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. 16. 16, approval of the Johnson control proposal. It tends to access control work related to the school security vestibule projects at Hubbard, Griswold, and McGee schools. Okay. Finally getting these things. How are these going the, the overall? The vestibules are uh, almost in. Um, to the point um willard's substantially complete um mcgee substantially complete they started on hubbard this week and then moving to grizzled for next week oh great um the caveat to all this work is the, the current access control system and then the expansion of it within the building um the current system provider was able to perform this work um based on what we have there so we're, we're looking for the extension of what's needed to accommodate the new vestibules Okay. Um, what would it like before school starts? What are we thinking? How they all, how, how they all going to, are they all going to be ready? Probably not. It's going to be tight. Um, you know, lock and key door swinging will have that function as far as all the integration with access control and, right. and, and Stanley open uh, access, uh, handicap openers. It's going to be very, very tight on the schedule, but we're hoping that everybody can accommodate it and have it done in time. Um, will be a couple bugs to work out. I'm sure, but yeah, uh, flow changes to the building. It's going to be new for the staff returning, um, you know, parents, students, Right, um, but this, this is kind of a vital portion sure. of the project, um, you know, to secure the building and, and have that access control feature, and what the staff is allowed to do from the office to open and close doors remotely. Um, so it's it, it is an important component. That's great. Okay, that's good. They're on their way. That's great. Hopefully they'll be done. If not, hopefully very soon after school starts. So there was quite a bit of unknowns on this portion of it mm. a year ago, um, not knowing what was going to happen with the camera system expansion. Um, luckily, the new software will integrate with this access control system with the new camera system, and we can build on this platform down the road. So it's, it's been a lot of work on the Board of Ed IT department with our vendors and through design, but they're, they're actually working on those systems now, too. The camera systems have started. What, uh, what, what manufacturer for the camera system? Do you we know? have a, a Samsung camera. Um, there's some access cameras. So we have kind of the, the upper tier of what, what's recommended. Um, oh, great. And we have a, a Genetech security platform that's going to manage everything. So it's a pretty complex, advanced system that we think is going to give us what we need. So Great. Beautiful. I have just a quick question yeah. since yes. um, you seem to think you saved money by not putting this in, in the beginning. It, uh, it was, yeah, when we went through the design with the architect and the state uh, construction office and the feedback from potential bidders, everyone was reluctant to, to kind of have to take on that responsibility to work with our system provider. Okay. Because there, there was a lot of unknowns and they wanted to focus more on the construction aspect of it and not have to, you know, worry about the coordination of our existing systems because there's the IT that has to provide them access, then there's internal staff. Well, at the end of the day, it was a cost saving measure, like yeah, you yeah, said yeah. here. Even though it doesn't look like a cost savings, it's, um, <laughs> uh -huh. it's unfortunately, it's very, very expensive to, to maintain and operate. And this is going to continue to grow as an operational <laughs> cost, the more we expand on these systems. So, um, you know, they are somewhat proprietary. We're limited to who we can use for, for dealers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is like, uh, with anything electrical or computer based, it has to get upgraded over time. So these, these current systems that we're utilizing now and expanding on are, are at the 10-year mark. So we'll be able to get the vestibules up and running, but certainly going to look to replace and expand and, and upgrade as the years go on. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I'm good. 
have a motion. Okay, I move to approve the proposals provided by Johnson Controls utilizing the State of Connecticut DAS contract number 17 PSX 0002 in the amount of $49,619, which includes a 10% contingency to perform access control work related to the school security vestibule projects at Hubbard, Griswold, and McGee schools. Second. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions? Hearing mean, none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So move. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Thank you, Doug. All right, so town manager report. Town manager report. Yeah. So I don't have a whole lot, but you know, I mentioned last time, beginning September, I've started having conversation with uh, our team here. What I'd like to do is to not to give you a book, but maybe a couple of pages and updates on some of the key projects, services, other things going on around the town. And I, I say my initial observation, there are a lot of good going on in the town and I'd like to share that with you and the public here. Uh, the people work very hard to get those things done. So, um, so you'll see that beginning September. Right. Uh, the, what I want to include, is one is updates. And the second one, I also want to give you under the heading of uh, a heads up, uh, things that I wouldn't want you to read in the newspaper or in the evening news before finding out here things happening about the town. So as we'll find a way to filter that mm -hmm. and get to you as quickly as possible. Uh, then the third one that we have been talking about is on the operational side and the town itself, uh, things that we can perhaps do better. It's called con under continuous improvement, uh, customer service, communications, efficiencies. So I'll try to Date you on those as well um, as, as we progress. So um, for we today. I appreciate that second one because I don't know how many, many days, or not many days, but many occasions I would wake up or even in the morning see something happen in Berlin that was, you know, fairly significant. I mean, not, thank God, not a tragedy, but, but and I'm like, well, what the heck? Nice to know. Yeah. Right. Or later in the day or whatever happened. You know, you, we, we, we really wouldn't get notice about certain things, right? I mean, I, ne I never, none of us got noticed, so. So we'll work on that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great, that's great. Because we uh, get questioned, I mean, that's yeah, really, exactly and you know, yeah. we want to know, I mean, listen, it's, I mean, get get the event over with, but I mean, we do get questions on that, and it's embarrassing when no one on the town council has heard it, you know, it's nice to hear some, again, we'll, we'll probably have to figure out what, what we consider significant, not every little thing, yeah, exactly. but you know, if it made the news, it's probably pretty significant, significant right? Yeah, so. Um, yes. And also, if uh, I know we're taking the month of August uh, off, we don't have council meetings, but if you think of anything that I can be helpful, any information that I can provide you, anything else that you would need from the town, we're happy to put it together. So um, let's keep talking about it. Great. So a couple of other quick updates. Uh, these things happened after the uh, <laughs> reports went out. We got two days ago, uh, a letter from the Department of Transportation. They just completed the biennial bridge inspection activities. Uh, they sent us a report, and the town of Berlin maintains 15 of those uh, in the national bridge inventory. But the good news is that 13 of them, they're good or fair. Mm -hmm. uh, two of them, uh, the one on uh, Kensington Road over the Matabasset River, is rated poor, but there's another one on Glen Street over the same river is rated critical. Oh. So uh, they have advised us, they've given the report to Public Works and I got a copy as well. They have uh, advised us to uh, engage a professional engineering firm immediately to uh, take a look at it ourselves and assess what is warranted. These things take good, you know, five to 10 years sometimes, depending on the type of repair you want to do. Uh, what we don't want to do, uh, want to happen is for them to come in here and close the road or do something drastic. So, uh, Mike, uh, and you took a look at the bridge, right? I walked in. Oh. You walked into the bridge. Mike? Mike. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and uh, so we're going to move okay. on it very quickly, but I we want you to know in case you find out through yeah. some other channel. So, yeah. So, those weren't, the, they're not any of the f other four that we were just no. refurbishing. Yeah, okay. No. And the other ones, yeah. And, and just to go back, the Kensington Road Bridge is already in a program. We're getting a We already have approval from a CRA grant. We're oh, okay. We already have an engineer on, on board to sure. go further with that. Right. Um, the Glen Street Bridge, there's a box culvert, a concrete box culvert, and a, uh, a steel arch culvert, basically corrugated metal. 
there's rust along where the water line is, uh, essentially where the, you know, at, at, and I actually um, took a look at the report. Portions of um, the base or the invert of the um, culvert are rusted. So I went with um, Jim Horrible. I actually walked into the culvert. The, uh, the, uh, the arch over the, um, uh, the culvert, the top part of it, is in good shape. There's no deformation, no distortion. So that looks like it's still stable. They're just worried about it um, being critical because um, essentially the base of it is rusting in portions. So I talked to DOT. They get, they're looking at it. They're gonna, they might reduce the load rating. They have a couple of other options. Um, but road closure is a potential you know, recommendation from them. So I just, we, we just wanted to let you know that. And we're probably going to have to get a, um, on board an engineering firm to take a look at it, and then we'll decide if we want to go into a program with the state or the feds, or do we want to do it on our own to uh, sort of, if, it, if the road closes, I'd rather go the faster route, but uh, we'll take a look at the cost and the options. So are they're suggesting right now that we immediately? No, 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 no. Oh. They're, oh. They, I'm just saying that that's an option, ah, and okay. I've, uh, you know, it, it, they're basically they're doing some ratings um, with their engineering group, and they're going to come back and they're going to give us our options and what their recommendations are. So. Thank you. Sorry about that. Thank you. Yeah, I think we're <laughs> under the uh, heading of heads up. Perhaps, uh, Chris, you want to come up here to volunteer to give more information about the 883 Farmington Avenue request uh, has to do with the development and the owner of the buildings um, concern about parking and uh, possible that they will reach out to any one of you at some point and just we want to tell you where we are with that and give you some um, give you an update on our proposal Thank you very much. Yes. So 883 Farmington Avenue is the old Kensington firehouse where Joel's hair currently is. Um, the owner of the property, Joel and his wife, have used the spaces just to the side of the building here along the driveway of 889 for a number of years. Um, essentially, that is a big part of the new development. <clears throat> and essentially, what we are working with the developer on is to give Joel and his family, as they own the building, the ability to use the parking places. Uh, essentially, the Newport Group will be paving them, give them the ability to use them, and the town will be putting an easement together with the property owner at 883. So the good thing is, too, is it will still be used by him, but it will be part of the project as well. Um, also, they'll also have access to the rear of their building. Um, the building itself, the property lines, are approximately three to four feet off the side of each side of the building. So. Technically, there's no legal access to the rear of the building. With the relationship and with the easement we're going to be giving them, they will have access to the rear of the building. Um, again, they're going to uh, pave it and uh, be no cost to the current owner. Um, <clears throat> as we move forward, any changes, modification, and repaving will be shared pro rata between the developer and the property owner. And then again, we're going to be putting the uh, easement together at this point. Uh, we have sat down with DOT. There may be some minor changes, but right now it looks like essentially they will still have access to the parking spots, likely a right in and right out of that area. And then if someone does wish to get to the rear of the building, they would actually have to go through the complex. That way we don't have two cars coming in at the same time, because likely that will be, again, Assuming that if we can get a restaurant or two in the bottom of building B, you will have deliveries, food, etc. So the good thing is, for safety's sake, um, we are working that out right now with the folks at Newport, and then with our corporation council, put the easement together for 883. So that's one of the pieces that had come up in the past. They were talking about uh, adverse possession, which essentially is a nice way to say, I've been using it for a long time, it's mine. Um, not something both from our existing corporation council and previous corporation council, because we are a municipality, they do not have that right against us, which is why we've put this in place, which I didn't think is the best for all parties concerned. Is uh, Joel happy? He knows what we're doing. Uh, he's understanding of at this point. Um, he actually has asked me for any environmental reports, which I'm working with Larero on. So. I'm not sure the current status of it. I know once we get closer, we'll be meeting with them again. But I did sit down with he and his wife and kind of talked about what we're doing. 
at this point. And they'll have the use of the parking, so that's good. Well, they will. I mean, essentially right now the way the building is set is they have four parking spots in front and about five or six in the rear. So essentially they'll have Same. another probably five or six on the side that, again, they can be used both by Joel's employees, customers, as well as folks within the new Newport development. But we will at least give him access to them, which is what he currently uses them for. Thanks. Uh, continuing, so some good news. Yes. I'll share this with you. This is about a survey that was uh, conducted by the uh, state and Medicare licensure for the VNA. Mm -hmm. This was done in June, and the survey uh, was, uh, they were relicensed with a de what's called a deficiency free survey, and they found that they were 100% compliant and in all a areas and have no corrections. Um, right. Quite for this by the state, uh, so it, it's great. Not only they are you know five star uh, agency in patient satisfaction and also 100% compliant with federal and state. That's so excellent. So that's that's really good news, and I know yeah. it, these things don't just happen by accident. And people there put in a lot of effort, from what I've seen in the last couple of weeks. So that's good news. Something to be yeah. proud about. Very good news. Yeah. That's um, great. This is just an FI. You probably saw this today in the Hartford Current. Uh, Chris uh, forwarded the article about the bond rating upgrade. Oh yeah. Moody's and S&P. And yes. it's, it's um, oh, thank you. It's phenomenal. And it, it, it speaks to what Kevin mentioned before uh, about, mm -hmm. you saw it, about the uh, uh, prudent financial management and paying down debt and, mani debt and managing all your resources well so you're doing something right and I think not many uh, towns get upgraded right and I have these kind of ratings so it, it's good work and uh, everybody should be proud of it um, so I have the, the, I can conclude my remarks but I have two items uh, pertaining to uh, real estate that I want to add to the exec executive session one uh, uh, is related to the con rail spur and the second one is a uh, real estate uh, purchase that has uh, come to our attention, a request to purchase land from the town. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna add it to the executive yeah. session. No um, all right, we can do that. Um, bef before we end your report, um, I wonder if Chris could just, because we were talking about parking and the new development, but I know we had this discussion, I think, Fairly recently, so with Kensington and the new coffee shop, which is doing well and it's all great. So I know we have tried and tried and tried um, our best to add some parking to our little Kensington village there with the parking behind the, uh, I don't know what address that is there. but It would be behind the barbershop building, the eyeglass, the right. eye doctor building, and the dentist's office. Yes, right. we had. And we've try, tried, just in case members of the council maybe don't know. I didn't even know. I know I know you guys were trying. I didn't realize how often we, we went around and around. I knew that for we a did. while. Uh, just a quick background. Yeah. We had uh, gotten some monies for um, Streetscape, kind of a phase two, to work with the rest of the triangle. We had worked a proposal with three of the property owners essentially to do a shared municipal parking lot. Essentially, they would lease a portion of their rear property, the parking lot, to the town for a dollar a year. The town would pave it, maintain it. It would become municipal parking. Um, we would use the existing grant monies we had. Uh, I had worked for probably almost close to two years. Um, we seemed to have an agreement in place with two of the three. The third refused. And at that point, it became a moot point. Um, we could, had, we needed to move forward. Um, the monies needed to be used. We also have seen, too, if you look at it, there's been some issues with different parts of it. And I know um, Micah Hearn is now kind of overseeing where it's headed. But that piece of it, essentially, it, we've tried. We're not going to revive that. The parking lot? Um, the parking lot in the rear. That's I, all their private property, right? It is. It's all private property. Uh, we cannot use either local or state funds to <clears throat> basically enhance a private property. It, we're not able to do that. That's why if we did the lease and the town was controlling it, we could. Um, right. I have approached a couple of the tenants and property owners about 
literally going back there, making it flat with gravel. Um, I've given them a name, number of a local contractor. Nothing has happened. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know it's numerous things, it's numerous property owners, but I know that a successful coffee shop is putting a lot of pressure yeah. on, on other people, which I understand. Yeah. Um, and yeah. if Mike would like to come up, he can kind of give an idea of some of the things we will be doing instead of the rear parking lot, but we're definitely looking at it. But it, I've tried as much as I can. Um, I no, think I know. You, you know me well enough to know I don't give up easy. <laughs> and I, I, I had to on this one because the, the third property owner just would not budge. On this. Too bad. He didn't want to lease it, or what do they want? They want something conditions on it for the. He just was not want... willing. Was not willing to sign anything or do anything. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, we tried. We I know we tried. Um, yes. So, for Kensington Village. So just the street there. There's some ripped up. Again, I get these complaints. Some ripped up bricks, Mike. That. Yeah, I got that too. Right. Actually. Yeah. yeah, I think we've all been getting them, and I know we're looking at kind of redoing that a little bit, right? Or whatever. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, there's going to be a concept plan that's going to go to DECD for their approval to get, I guess, the funding commitment or the approval to use the funds for that. Yes. Um, th I've been getting calls also about the parking, mm -hmm. and I was impressed when I first started. I saw it was a p complete parking plan done for that back triangle behind all those, um, mm -hmm. yeah. the barbershop and um, yeah. coffee shop. So I'm surprised that it didn't go forward because I think the deal was a good one mm. and it would have solved a lot of problems, but you have private property owners who don't want to, uh, I guess one who doesn't want to uh, proceed. So yeah. um, having said that, the redesign of, we're going to replace the crosswalks. The brick is kind of coming up, so that they're going to rework those. There might be one more space added to Main Street by moving a handicapped spot and doing a few things, but... People have been asking for five or six spaces, and uh, you know I understand the frustration. Um, so that's sort of where it stands. Also, the fire department was not happy with one of the raised islands because of the turning movement, so that's going to be flattened, and, and things shifted around so that the the turning uh, movement will be, you know, <laughs> actually they can make it with a fire truck. Yeah, that's good. So that's there's going to be some geometric um, and some vertical adjustments. <clears throat> I mean, I, I you know I, I know. I don't know if we want to change that much, but the, the, the thing that people do seem to complain about, too, is the, the Middle Islands. Um, I, I don't know if it's possible, worth it, expensive. I, I don't really know the answer, but what I've seen in other towns around is that, which I wish they had designed it that way, but before, before my time, uh, you know, what they do is, so they don't have the, we have the big granite pieces and then you get the brick <laughs> in the middle a lot most a lot of towns i notice they have you know it rises up so right. that the brick is flat with the pavement so if a car does move over right. a little bit because it is narrow there you don't you don't wreck your car you don't wreck the granite uh more, more likely wreck your car honestly yeah. and and you know it raises up in the middle so you still put a couple flower pots or whatever but right. but they, there's a lot of room to go over which yeah. will help emergency response as well as snow removal. us snow removal and us drivers that sometimes just hit the hit the middle but <laughs> um, I haven't, but other people have. So um, I don't know if that's something that's well, worth. You know, actually, it's at. a good time because we're going to be giving comments back to the engineering firm who's actually putting the concept plan and mm -hmm. sort of packaging it for DECD. Yeah. Okay. Um, mountable curbs is also another thing that I, I per personally like because I seem to hit curbs once in a while. Yes. Um, but I'll that middle island, I also know it's a problem with deliveries where trucks have been seen backing up, and I think they bent over one little light post um, okay. out there too. Yeah. So. We'll it's take a, a look at that middle. I was more focused on where the fire department was concerned about at the corner. Yeah, no, quite th there too. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. obviously public safety, and you know we get that. But th I think that would help the middle too yep. for for everyone. Yep. Right. So yes. that maybe that's something because it's not that much work. I mean, it's not that big an area to fix that. Oh. I would imagine. No. So I would say, Mike, make sure you talk to the police commission because I think they have purviews over the roads. Yep. Yeah, that's true. We don't we'll do. Step on their toes. <laughs> and, yep. Uh, well, that's unfortunate. That's too bad for that area. I mean, I don't, I don't know why. You know, a lot of people talk about vacancies on Farmington Avenue, vacancies in Kensington Village, and I try and tell them that, you know, there's only so much that the town government can do. We obviously tried very hard in this area, and I know you guys have been working on it for a long time, Chris and the former town manager and other people, to, to make some extra parking there to make everybody's life better and to hopefully we maybe some of the vacancies we would fill but um you know without parking it's very hard to fill yeah. a vacancy i mean I, I you know and there's only so much we can do as the town obviously if private property owners don't want to um cooperate or you know have their reasons why they may be good reasons i, I don't really know but 
for the good of all, it, it would have been nice if we could have got that parking lot going. But I know, I know, we tried. For, I think we, there was we, we tried desperately, and, yeah, and, and to add to the parking piece, we had looked at. I believe there was three spots that were by the uh, exit of the drive-through of Dairy Queen. There were a couple spots oh, in man. front of the eye doctor. Mm -hmm. The issue is the safety of people backing out. Mm -hmm. People take that corner from Farmington onto Main Street at a very quick pace. Mm -hmm. The concern of you backing in there. The other concern is is people backing into people possibly going across a crosswalk. So we've looked at every possible yeah, configuration. <laughs> uh, Cardinal Engineering, who's working with us now, who was not our previous engineer, uh, we've bent this every way backward and forward mm -hmm. and have find the spots where we can. All right. Well, and it looks like we can make a few more fixes to it. Yes. Uh, hopefully we'll make it a little bit more usable. And I guess we'll see what happens with the parking. But thank, thank you, gentlemen, for all your work in trying to make that area work. It looks nice, but sometimes it's just not that functional, I guess. So anyway, thanks. <coughs> Okay, so where we uh, where we are? Uh, we are at our special committee report. Sorry, <laughs> all right. Special committee report. Yeah. Uh, I want to read an email from um, Jennifer from Parks Department. Um, I tried to forward this email earlier, but I had a new phone, so everybody's email here isn't popping up. And I thought she had sent it to everybody, but this is a Scalise Field update. Oh, good. Um, and Jennifer's on vacation, and she said Steve Wood was going to be here, but I don't see him. So I'll read her email. She did attach pictures, and I'll try and get this to everybody later um, she told me that as as you can see from the pictures it is starting to look like a field again uh, they have almost completed laying the shock pad in the new turf uh, minus the sports markings uh, this she sent to me on Friday um, so minus the sports markings logo in the infill uh, from the very beginning we have told all field users that the field will be closed until September 3rd at this time we are confident and it will be completed by that date in our contract with the field turf, uh, we included milestone deadlines with liquidated damages of $500 per day that are applied against the contractor's fee if milestone dates are not met. This was our way of trying to ensure the contractor is making continuous progress and not, putting, not just putting everything off until the end. Um, below is a summary of where they currently stand on those milestone deadlines. She provided a little chart here. We have already tallied $21,500 in liquidated damages that will be taken off the final price tag at the end of the project. Uh, we have weekly meetings on the site with Field Turf, run by Luke McCoy of Castle Booz Associates. Luke has been extremely helpful and instrumental in keeping Field Turf on task. As I said, they have almost completed laying and gluing of the surface, however, have missed some submittals and testing, which is why they're still being charged liquidated damages. Uh, Steve Wood and myself has al have also been on site just about every day taking prog progression photos and checking in with the contractor. So that's the update there. That's great. It's uh, great to hear. Thank you. Yeah, I know. The other thing I, I heard is someone e texted me about a rumor that uh, the money was pulled for the ADA compliance fix of the bleachers. <laughs> and I was assured by Jennifer that that wasn't true because we approved the money here. Uh, the Board of Finance approved the money, and um, I think sometime by August um, that will be completed. So th that rumor is not true. Not true. Thank you. Thanks for that update. Yeah, that's good. Doesn't stop it. Another <laughs> rumor. <laughs> Another vicious rumor. Okay. Okay. Any? I don't. We didn't do any other special. Right? There was none. So we can uh, move on from that. And we got Councilor Communications. What do we have? Anybody? I'm good. Yeah. Everybody's good? I just have one yes. question. Sure. Um, it probably won't be able to be answered today, but um, how are things going in terms of assessments and tax taxes going out? Is everything, you know, anything pending that's still not in place in terms of the tax bills for different either individuals or businesses? Uh, Kevin, Kevin. Kevin, <laughs> Kevin. So perhaps Kevin. we can have that an answer yeah. for at that at our next meeting. Yeah. What we can probably do, um, Karen, is of course they do the collection really and truly until August first. Right. So, um, but in, our interim town manager can get something from Kevin and from Debbie Swan about how things are going and where we stand right now. There's been a steady 
Well, that's, that's part of what I was asking, yep. but the other part is, are there still assessments that are not, um, people are saying no, and are there lawsuits pending or anything like that? Talking uh, about tax appeals? Yeah. yeah. So there's... There's certainly tax appeals pending. <clears throat> that has nothing to do with billing. Okay, so they would be billed regardless? Right. Okay. okay. If they prevailed, it would... Um, get a credit, credit the following future year. tax bills right. thank you right. thank you okay but there was the um the tax sales notices went out today they're posted downstairs in the foyer okay all right and they were put on the land records today okay i think that there was 15 of them okay so you may want to just look at that karen okay thank you kate Sorry, taxes are due huh next week huh <coughs> yeah, damn we better buy, did you? yeah <laughs> Okay, better get those done, right? Work will get on that. Uh, any other comments? Just Three none, we'll go. Can, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, that's good. There's one thing that has come up, and uh, yeah. a rush, do you want a rush? Just to another this? heads up type of thing. This we yeah. got it this afternoon about with the elections coming up. The whole location for the second voting district is going to be moved from the American Legion to the VFW. Oh, yeah. no. been, notices have been going out. Oh, okay. voters, and uh, I believe it's uh, related to an uh, issue with access to the the uh, American Legion facility, uh, limited access. They can give only one key, not at all the time. So it was not oh. working out well. Hmm. So it's been moved, and everybody's been informed. Oh. So Thank that's you. a notice that's going out. And letters are going out, yeah. right? Like yes, out. and just to explain more, because we made all the copies for the um, registers, is that there'll be 300, 540, 3,540 letters going out August 8th. Mm -hmm. um, registers want to wait until after the possibility of a primary. So if there's, a, and I just got all the party endorsements in um, tonight, that if there's any um, primaries held, it would be at the old location. This is for November. So. What, like what he's trying to do is put you on notice so that when things happen, yep. you, have a, 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 you have it ahead of time. Thank but you. it's just for the general populace, it, they won't really get the letter until um, the middle of August more. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, nothing else. We're going to our acceptance of minutes. We have uh, our... Have make a motion to add those couple things or just read them? Uh, why don't you do it after the minutes before you go into executive session? That I think that might be more well better. Okay. All right, so we get the uh, minutes for uh, July 9th. Make a motion to approve. Uh, I'll move. Second on that? Keep me to it. Second. Yeah. Good, there we go. All, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Kate, one abstention. Yeah. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. One, one abstention. So moved. Okay, so what are we, we add? Uh, I'd like to make a motion to add a couple items to the executive session. One pertains to the Conrail Spur by the railroad station, and the other is the possible sale or purchase of real estate. Right. Okay. Motion to second on that? Second. Second. Uh, any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, move, motion to move into our executive session. Okay, make a motion to uh, go into executive session pending litigations. Can I get general state statutes, section 1-206, part B, strategy and negotiations with respect to pending claims or pending litigation, uh, Helen Riggins litigation to the Conrail Spur uh, near the train station and possible sale or purchase of real estate. Okay, second on that? Second. Thank you. Yeah, who are we inviting in? Oh, Mr. Edge. Mr. Edge is invited in. You, of course, Mr. D'Onofrio, Jennifer Coppola is invited in. Town manager? The town manager, of course, and not Mr. Uh, you need Mike. The public works director in, or no? Chris, do you need Mike for that? Mike, are you in this executive session? I don't think, I don't think, is it not, I, we don't believe it's needed. But you, Thank you. You're welcome to wait outside till we're done. <laughs> you can say goodnight then. Right. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Mike.